All right, so we're back with office hours in mechanics with structure free learning. And we're going to do an example problem with shear flow again. Shear flow. Okay, shear flow. So here, let's see, I am given, so half, you know, well, part of the battle is reading the problem statement and making sure that you understand it. And this is a beam, it's made up of four boards connected together by nails, and each nail can resist a shear of three kilonewtons. So what that means is that the allowable force on each nail is three kilonewtons. That's what it means, okay? And I would like to, and there's a cantilever beam with loading shown, and oh, it's kind of messed up because they put a three kilonewton load here. It kind of like, it's like throws you off maybe with all the same numbers, right? You know, it's all good. You just have to make sure you keep things straight. But we'd like to find the max load P that we can apply to this cantilever beam. And really this allowable force on the nail alludes to one mode of failure for this beam. If there were other allowable stresses, then there were other modes of failure that we'd have to investigate with other BDRs, right? That BDR is like super duper important in our class. Mm -hmm. It's like, dang, dude, it's like the crux of all things that we make. You know what I'm saying? Damn. It's also important in just your own personal relationships. Because, you know, you got to define a relationship. Uh, yeah, you got to have the talk, right? <laughs> you can't just like be like, are we friends? Are we more? Yeah, anyway, but that, that's, you know, you, that's where you need that BDR, right? <laughs> Otherwise, things are going to fail, dude. <laughs> it's all good. All right, so here's what it looks like. Here's the, the schematic. One schematic. Uh, I have this beam looking deal which is a cantilever um, and then this beam is connected by four boards so if you look at the cross section of the beam it looks like this it looks like this uh, it's not a good cross section it's four boards and the nails go through here they go through they connect those four boards together and they have these you know if i was looking at the side here there'd be nails like that nails like this holding the boards together spacing of the nails do i know them oh yeah. uh, 100 millimeters so the spacing of the nails 100 millimeters the overall length of this thing is four meters oh and they broke it up so two meters and two meters there's a three kilonewton load here and then the unknown P is at the end here. And that is what we are trying to find. That max load P before or the instant when we reach an allowable force in the nails of three kilonewtons. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is determine the maximum internal shear that we expect to experience in this cross section. And so that's our basic statics that we need to do. And so two, or internal loading, internal loading. In this case, we just need the shear. We don't need to worry about the moment. I could draw a shear diagram. And if I draw a shear diagram, of this so I might want to calculate support reactions yeah. first I'm not gonna spend too so here I have that three kilonewtons here in the middle I have the P here based on my the distances that are given to me I would have a support reaction here of three kilonewtons plus P uh -huh. and then a moment here which would be six plus two P we don't need the moment though six kilonewton meters plus two meters times P Oh, four meters times P, the moment, but we don't need that. Uh, what we need is a shear diagram. And here I draw vertical lines at the discontinuities going left to right, just like we learned before here, the shear diagram. And some of you might already know where the maximum internal shear is going to happen. Mm -hmm. But in case you don't, if you don't know, then you probably need to draw a shear diagram. And here, this will be this three kilonewton plus P. I drop down three. That takes me to P, and I go all the way across, and this is P. And so my maximum shear is here in this first two meter segment of the beam. Mm -hmm. And that maximum shear that I'm going to use in this problem is three kilonewtons plus P. So that, that gives me that. 
And now because I'm only looking for shear flow, or I'm looking for the force applied on the nail, my limit state or my failure mode for the nail, is it a nail? Is that what they call it? A nail, failure of nail. And this nail failure, this nail failure mode, I'm gonna say has a BDR. It's the force applied on the nail less than or equal to F allowed. And that BDR again is very, very important. Here, if I know this, once I can understand this, then I know that the force applied on the nail is the shear flow times S divided by the number of planes less than or equal to the force allowed nail. Okay, on each nail. And the number of planes, I guess, is a way of looking at per nail. Huh? Yeah, like we talked about earlier, right? You know, like it's kind of like how many connectors do you cut through? Again, one more substitution. The shear flow is VQ over I times S divided by number of planes like this, less than or equal to F allow. So I will tell you that we know F allow, this is three kilonewtons, is given in the problem statement. Uh, do we know the spacing? Yeah, 100. 100 millimeters, we know that. We know the shear force is three kilonewtons plus P, this internal load. And like I've said before, you know, that internal force is what relates, you know, by equilibrium, we have related the internal load to the external load. And because of that, we can relate the stress to the external load or this the shear flow to the external load, right? Because of V and that equilibrium. We have this is three kilonewton plus P. Mm -hmm. So it relates, it helps us connect back to the external load. So now we have to calculate geometric properties, which is the first moment of area and the moment of inertia. Um, let's see, it looks like we have some dimensions. I This is a, t and the cross section looks like this. Uh, let's see, do I know where the centroid is? Yes, it has two lines of symmetry, therefore it's smack dab in the middle right here. And so I, I want to calculate my moment of inertia, my moment of inertia about a horizontal axis. Oy. And for this one, it would be faster if you just took the large area and subtracted out the whole area, which is right here. And only because those two areas the larger area, this big rectangle here, shares the same geometric centroid as the hole, which is right here. And so that moment of inertia would be 112, the base, which is 250 plus 60, 310, times the height of 150 cubed minus 112, the base of 250, times the height of 150 minus 30 minus 30, so it's 90 cubed. And this will be, I got 72, 72 times 10 to the six millimeters to the fourth. And so I know I, and really the, the part that most people struggle with is probably the first moment of area Q. And so here for the first moment of area, here's my cross section again. And the key is, cut through the nails or the connectors or connections and make sure that the first moment of area is not zero. So here, if I make just one cut, I don't disconnect anything. And, and really, the whole area is what I'd have to use for A prime. And that would give me a capital Q, a first moment area of zero, which is useless in our problem. That, that, if we got a capital Q of zero, that's like saying we don't need no nails. You know what I'm saying? It's like boards stick together using the force. <laughs> I'm probably gonna go like this and then I'm gonna I'm gonna cut through both nails and then I'm gonna choose this as my a prime okay and so capital Q the first moment of area in this case which is the sum of a prime times y bar prime there's just one element the area of that element is 250 times 30 millimeters and then the distance from the neutral axis to the center of this element is y bar prime. Mm -hmm. This is 75 minus 15. Mm -hmm. So this is 60. 0 0.45 times 10 to the 6 millimeters cubed. Okay. All right. How many shear planes? Two. We have two shear planes. Good. Okay. It's like we cut through two nails. Mm -hmm. So it's like saying, 
we got divided by two per nail, you know, to get yeah. it to per nail. Okay, all right, all right, all right, good. So now that we have all the numbers, we just need to solve. In solving, we have, you know, again, we're just gonna start substituting for V, it was uh, three kilonewtons plus P times the first moment of area, which was 0.45 times 10 to the six millimeters cubed. Uh, divided by the moment of inertia, which is 72 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth, times the spacing of, what was the spacing? I, oh, 100 millimeters. We had that over here. And then divided by two shear planes, less than or equal to 3 kilonewtons. So another way to have done this would have been to just say solve for V here mm. and then equate it later. Okay. Okay. But that's another way to do it. You mm -hmm. could solve for V and then equate it to three kilonewtons plus P, okay. right? And then solve for P. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, What's up? Also, oh, mm -hmm. so if it was easier to, mm -hmm. have, it would have come out with the same answer if I took the area of the like, of the outer half instead of the inner one right here, right? Yeah, you would have had to um, use this whole portion right here in theory, mm -hmm. right? But if you break it up into this side element, like. If you broke it up into this mm -hmm. plus this, oops, I, uh, this and this, so you would have three elements, right? Yeah. You would have three elements. And those three elements, what's interesting about those three elements is that the, the two on the side, the distance from the neutral axis to the center of that element is zero. Mm -hmm. And so you would have just been left with this this area right here. Oh, okay. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Yeah, because the distance from the neutral axis to, to the center of this red one right here is zero. Mm -hmm. And so you would have been zero plus this plus zero. Okay. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that's a good question. And and I, I, I like to leave things, especially when I'm working SI units, I like to th leave things in the, the scientific notation. Mm -hmm. A lot of times the, the moment of inertia is in times 10 to the 6. And so especially when you do it in millimeters. And so that's why I wrote this in 0.45 times 10 to the 6. Right, that yeah. was a good problem. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, we're not done. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, I get, well, we can solve for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess then technically we're done. Mm -hmm. So here we solve for P. I don't know what we get for P, but um, here, let's solve for it real fast so you can have something to check against later. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, and so if we solve for this, we'll get uh, is less than or equal to 9.6 kilonewtons and then p would be less than or equal to 6.6 .6 kilonewtons and so this would be our uh, that's the max we could put 6.6 .6 kilonewtons all right all right structure free <laughs> uh, i'm losing it losing it <laughs>